All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Rakakradash for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, especially in the times we're in. So once again, all praises to Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai giving us this knowledge and understanding of these scriptures and you can never praise the heavenly father and his only begotten son enough all right so once again all praises to yahweh baha shum yahweh shai for giving us this knowledge this truth this understanding and uh, later today we'll be celebrating the passover passover for the year of uh, 2023 it will be a very uh basic solemn assembly as well it should be if you remember the passover that yahweh shai had it was not it was nothing extravagant it was very humble very basic and um we pat now passover after yahweh shai's passover again yahweh shai's passover you can read about it in the gospels yahweh shai's passover was very basic and very simple all right Yahweh Shai didn't have no Passover at no strip club. <laughs> Neither did Yahweh Shai had any extravagant over the top Passover where guys was rapping and singing and dancing. None of that nonsense. Yahweh Shai had a very humble, straightforward Passover. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, later after the Passover, Yahweh Shai was arrested by the by the Sanhedrin you know the uh, wicked chief priests the wicked scribes Pharisees they were led by uh, Judas Iscariot the Gospels tell us this they were led by Judas Iscariot to the Garden of Gethsemane where Yahweh Shai was along with his disciples minus Judas Iscariot of course they were led there to arrest Yahweh Shai all right and he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was brought to the judgment hall to be put on trial and later to be crucified. So you can you can imagine the sorrow that Yahweh Shai's spirit was in in that Passover. As a matter of fact, that very night, later that night, Yahweh Shai was in the Garden of Gethsemane, which the word Gethsemane, when you look it up, it means oil press. Oil press. And and the the oil was our Lord being pressed down in the spirit. And that's what he said. He said, he said, my, my uh, spirit is, is sorrowful, even to the point of death, roughly paraphrasing that scripture. And he told the disciples to watch with him because he knew that was, that would be the night where he would be arrested and all the things he had to suffer for the nation of Israel would, would commence on that very night, that, that Passover night going into the morning. All right, so our Lord suffered many things um, right after that Passover meal. He suffered many things because he was the Passover. He was the, as it is written, he was the Passover lamb for our nation, beginning with the elect. So the Passover lamb goes through the fire to be sacrificed. And Yahweh Shai went through the fire. What was the fire? Well, all the hell that he endured from the wicked chief priests, scribes and Pharisees, you know, the slandering, the insulting, you know, the putting of the crown of thorns on his head. Uh, what else? And then being led through the streets of Jerusalem, carrying a cross, being humiliated, totally humiliated. And then ultimately to be put on a cross and endure three hours of excruciating pain. Okay. To the point where he cried and uh, he said to his father, into thy, father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And he gave up the spirit. And from that moment, he passed away. And he was in the, <clears throat> he was in the tomb for, um, for, for three days and three nights, a total of 72 hours. And then he, as, as prophesied by the prophets, he was raised up. He was raised up from the grave. And he spent 40 days with his uh, disciples and was taken up into the heavens this is pursuant to the book of acts the first chapter and there he is with his father yahweh 
and sits at the right hand of his father, Yahweh, and he's dead to this very day. You know, getting ready to come back on the planet Earth. Um, well, actually, come back in those chariots and um, him along with a multitude of angels, Michael the Archangel being one of them, to destroy the society and set up his kingdom on the planet Earth. Yahweh Shai setting up his kingdom on the planet Earth. So there you go, man. That's pretty much uh, that's pretty much this thing in a nutshell, man. You know, we're waiting for Yahweh Shai to come back and get his revenge. You know, in the book of Isaiah, the 47th chapter, it speaks about that. Yahweh Shai said the day of vengeance is in his heart. All right. He, it also says the year of his redeemed has come. His redeemed is the elect. The only ones that Yahweh Shai is delivering when he comes back is the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. So all these other, all these other religions with their, their ideas and thoughts of how uh, they think it's going to go down, you know, when the Lord comes, like he's going to gather everybody, everybody's going to be saved. Some of them believe that nonsense. You know, you have the different religions have their different beliefs. The truth is, you know, the, the pure truth is that when Yahweh Shai comes back, pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30, he's only going to gather his elect, and the elect is of the nation of Israel. The only elect nation, as a matter of fact, when you go in the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, and we, we mentioned that at the camp, the only elect nation that the Heavenly Father created is the nation of Israel. And you can read that in the book of Isaiah, the, 45, the 45th chapter, and um, I'll give you the verse in a minute. <clears throat> Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Here it is. Isaiah 45 and uh, 3. Let me see if I start there. Isaiah 45 and 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. And hidden riches of secret places. Who's the D? To the Israelites. Okay. And and that's a metaphor for this 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 knowledge, this truth that we have. The treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I the Lord, which call thee by thy name am the power of Israel. Yeah, and we, and we know that for certain. That's why, you know, that's why we that believe in this knowledge, this truth, this this treasure of darkness, this hidden rich riches of secret places. <laughs> that's a hell of a metaphor, man. That's why we that believe in it, we fear Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shai. And that's what, one of the reasons why we're constantly out there on the street, you know, regardless of the weather, you know, within reason, of course, uh, we're constantly out there on the street t teaching this word, pushing this gospel. That That is a sign to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son of our reverence, of our fear of the Heavenly Father and, the be and His begotten, His only begotten Son. Uh, it's written, the, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So that, that is an our that is an example of our fear. You know, the, the, uh, the parable says to, to go to the highways and the byways and compel the Lord's people to come in. And essentially, that's what we do. You know? Anyway, reading on, to make the point of the elect, it says, uh, which call thee by thy name and the power of Israel. Right? And his name is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. It didn't say any other nation. It did not say any other nation, vocab Malone. Okay? It did not say any other nation. It says, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel. Israel, mine elect. So the only elect nation elected by who? By the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, is the nation of Israel. That is his elect. Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. 
though thou has not known me. And, and essentially, as a nation, uh, the Heavenly Father took away our remembrance of him. And that's pursuant to Jeremiah 17 and 4, thou, and thou shalt discontinue thine heritage. So that's just one example of how the Heavenly Father blinded us as a nation to the acknowledgement of him. So we all had to return back to the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son to learn of the Heavenly Father. Okay, and we're in that time now. Through this knowledge, through this truth, we have been called and hopefully chosen to learn about the Heavenly Father, his only begotten son. And the only ones being called and hopefully chosen is the nation of Israel because the nation of Israel is the only elect nation of the Heavenly Father. We just read it here. You can't get around scripture, man. Isaiah 40, well, you, you can try. You can try, but but uh, at the end of the day, uh, how did the Apostle Paul say it? For we can do nothing against the truth, but before the truth. There's only one truth, man. And the one truth is that the only nation the Lord is dealing with is the nation of Israel. And here's bit, one of many examples in Scripture. Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect. Now, building on that word elect, when our Lord comes back, and this is pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30, I mean, the scriptures are very, it's very, the scriptures is very definite, or should I say definitive, on who is going to be delivered, who is going to be saved from the coming destruction. This is the book of Matthew 24 and 30 go right to the point it says and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven this is this is what we're waiting for this is the event that we're waiting for the son of man appearing in heaven cracking those those clouds as as it were all right yahweh shai and the angels right that's going to be one of the greatest events that ever to happen on the planet earth if not the greatest event right and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The Son of Man is another title for our Lord, Yahweh Shai. That's his proper name, Yahweh Shai. And that's in the ancient Hebrew. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And, and uh, all the Gospels talk about that. They all talk about that. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They all talk about the same event in different ways, of course, but pretty much the same message. All right. It says, as we read on, it says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect. Now, if you remember back in Isaiah 45 and 4, what did the scriptures say? Who, who are the elect? It mentioned a nation, the nation of Israel. The only elect of the Heavenly Father is the nation of Israel. And then you have an elect among the elect. Okay? The Apostle Paul spoke about the elect of the nation of Israel. All right? In the book of Romans, as a matter of fact, let's go there real quick. Now, I know this is very basic, but this is very important to know because, again... You have these other religions out there and they, they tell you different. They tell you that God's people are all people. No, they err not knowing the scriptures. They err not knowing the scriptures. Let's go to Romans, the 11th chapter, the 7th verse. It says, What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? Now Israel is the elect nation, but even among the elect nation, Israel is another elect, the elect of the elect. The Israelites... You know, the elect of the elect are Israelites, but that's the point. Even among the elect nation is an elect. All right? It's just like Elder Pastor said years ago. There are many layers to this thing of ours. It's like an onion, you know. When you chop an onion, there are many layers to that onion. Right? And guess who the elect of the elect of the elect would be? Well, Yahweh Shai and the apostles. Right? They're, they are the, the head of the elect. Right? They are the head of the elect, which is the elect of the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel themselves being an elect. 
So that proves the point. There are many layers to this, to this onion, man. Okay, this onion of truth. There are many layers to it. <laughs> what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election. There's that word again. The election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The rest of the Israelites were blinded. How much more the world? It tells us in Isaiah 60 and 1, gross darkness to people. The majority of people out there, they don't know what the hell is going on, man. They really don't. All right? When I say they don't know what the hell is going on concerning the scriptures, concerning who salvation really is for, very few people know and understand who salvation is really for, uh, who the Lord really came for, why he went on the cross, what that deal was all about. They, they, they're very ignorant to the understanding of that. They're very ignorant to the history of that. You know, why the Lord went on the cross, why he had to sacrifice himself, right? They're, they're very ignorant of why he had to do it. But those of us that know and understand the truth, we're not ignorant to it. We know exactly why. And yeah, the phone had to chime with that one, right? We know exactly why our Lord went on the cross and, and sacrificed himself on the cross. Okay? So again, Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, have obtained what? The hundred percent truth. All right. The hundred percent truth. The election of the nation of Israel have obtained it and the rest were blinded. See? So the Lord is only dealing with the elect. Now, when you go back to Matthew 24 and 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. What nationality is the elect? The, the nation of Israel, that's their nationality, their true nationality. They are Israelites, but not just any Israelite. They're the elect of the nation of Israel. They're, they are the elect of the elect. Okay? Those are the ones that the Lord is going to gather when he comes back. And that is scripture. You can't get around that. You can't gainsay that. Like the Apostle Paul said, for we can do nothing against the truth, but before the truth. Okay? Matthew 24 and 31. So if you're not part of the elect, you ain't being delivered, man. It's as simple as that. If you're not part of the elect, you're not making it. You ain't being delivered. Especially if you live here in America. You're going to be destroyed. The only ones making it out of, here, out of here, America, which is known in the Bible as Babylon the Great, is the elect. The elect of the nation of Israel. That's it. Everybody else is going to die, man. Because this place is going to be turned into a lake of fire. No, it's not going to burn forever. Like, like uh, Elder Pastor been going into and, and uh, we've been going into. He went into the word quench. This is a fire that will not be quenched. Meaning you can't put out that fire. No human being can put out that fire. That fire has to burn out. That's what it means by quench. The, the, no, no human being can quench that fire. All right, like when you have a thirst, right? The way you quench a thirst is you, 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 take, you drink some water and you quench that thirst. You no longer have a thirst, right? Well, this fire, no water will be able to put it out. No sand will be able to put it out. Sometimes you can throw sand on the fire if it's, if it's small enough, you can put it out. Or you can, you, you can throw water on the fire, you can put it out. Well, this fire, nuclear fire, you know, the Lord's sacrifice in Bozrah, which America is the modern day Bozrah, this is pursuant to scripture. This is a fire that you cannot put out. This is a fire that you cannot quench. So that fire is going to burn for a period of time, but eventually it's going to die down. And the proof of that is America itself is going to be turned into a lake of fire. Yes, but eventually that fire is going to die, die down and America is going to become a desert. And you can read about that in Isaiah, the 34th chapter. It's going to become a vast desert. So no, you know, as of late, the IUIC have been teaching that. Well, they've been teaching that for a while, all right, that there's going to be this lake of fire and, um, and uh, there's going to be this lake of fire and you're going to have wicked Israelites burning forever. One guy said, I, I forgot his name, Deacon Malachi, I think his name is, so-called Trinidadian. Uh, I always thought he was Jamaican, but I never listened to the accent closely and Somebody said he was Trinidadian. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, he does have a Trinidadian accent. There's a slight difference between a Trinidadian accent and a so-called Jamaican accent. You can kind of tell if you listen closely. Um, he, he made a statement about Israelites, wicked Israelites, 
and he was humorous with it. He said, uh, the, the, "Imagine you being a." He, he showed the clip of uh, uh, the clip from Terminator Two, the scene with uh, Sarah Connor burning in the fire, the nuclear fire. She had that dream. She saw herself burning in the fire, the nuclear fire. The actress who played that role was uh, Linda Hamilton, which I believe is married to the director, James Cameron. I don't know if they're still married, but she was married. I don't know if they're still married. Anyway, in the, in the scene, she's burning, burning to death. You know, flesh is jumping off a skeleton and a skeleton explodes. So while the scene is playing, he goes, uh, imagine if you're in that fire and you're, you're burning forever. You know, I'm trying to remember how he said it. Because you couldn't keep your, your, your dick in your pants. You know, he, he's saying that to the men trying to scare them. He's going off, man. You ain't going to be in no fire burning forever. The, 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 uh, um, the two-thirds of the nation of Israel, they'll be in the fire, but not burn forever. You know, the judgment will be quick because our power is a merciful power. All right, that's not an example of mercy. You and you and some fire burning forever, but that's once again that's a form of that so-called hell doctrine, where you, you you go to this place and you burn forever. No, the lake of fire is going to be America, but it's going to burn for a while, and then eventually the fire is going to die down, because this place is going to become a hundred percent desert, vast desert. You know the scripture that speaks about the stones of emptiness. That's in the book of Isaiah, the thirty-fourth chapter. It speaks about the stones of emptiness and the line of confusion. That's, a, that's a, a metaphor for a desert. This place is going to become a desert. America is going to become a desert 100% after the fire dies down. Okay? So no, there's no place where you're going to be, uh, as a punishment, you're going to be putting this, this lake of fire and you're going to burn forever. Those, those guys are going off, totally off. All right, so again, going back to Matthew 24 and 31, uh, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. So that's the elect of the nation of Israel. They don't, they're the only ones making it out of here, especially in Babylon the Great. And, and then the Lord is going to de deliver his elect from the four corners of the earth. All right, you're still going to have people around the earth uh, surviving the nuclear destruction. Right. But anyone that's in America, per se, in America, in America, inside joke. Right. Anyone that's in America, that's not part of the elect. They are going to die straight up. They are going to die. Even the ones that are in that bomb shelter, that the bomb shelter is going to be their grave. OK, because this place is going to be covered with fire. This place is going to be turned into a lake of fire. That's what the Apostle John said when he saw this place burning you know um another scripture that comes to mind one of my favorite is jeremiah the 51st uh jeremiah the 51st chapter where it speaks about america as this burnt mountain i will roll thee down from the rocks and thou shalt become a burnt mountain that's that's going to be america america is going to be that burnt mountain okay that burnt mountain <laughs> there you go so going back to who yahweh is going to deliver is, the scripture is very explicit. Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. That's the four corners of the earth. North, south, east, and west. From one end of heaven to the other. Because remember, when you go in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Remember the Lord said he would scatter the Israelites. There's, there's another clue. A super clue. The Lord said he would scatter the Israelites among the four corners of the earth from one end of heaven to the other that's in deuteronomy the 28th chapter around the 64th verse so once again that's alluding to the israelites so once again vocab malone it's all about the israelites salvation is only for the israelites see how i made that statement he said i am not come but this uh how does he say it in matthew 15 and 24 i am not come as a matter of fact let's get it so i can uh quoted correctly Matthew 15 and 24 it says uh but he answered who is the he Yahweh Shai but he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel and some of the lost sheep of the house of Israel became Gentiles yeah 
Some of the lost sheep of the house of Israel became Gentiles or were called Gentiles. And when you go into that word Gentile, it's from the Latin gentilis, which means foreigner. You had certain Israelites that became foreigners. Moses said that he was a foreigner in a foreign land. That's why he, na he, na his, he named his son Gershom, which means name of a foreigner. Garashom in the Hebrew, name of a foreigner. Because he was in a foreign land when he had his firstborn son, Gershom. He was in the land of Midian, and his wife was a foreigner. Okay, she was a Midianite. Okay, Zephra. All right, so, and what tribe was Moses from? Clearly, the Bible tells us in Exodus, Moses was of the tribe of Levi. His parents were of the tribe of Levi. So why did he name his son Garashem, which means name of a foreigner? Because he was in a foreign land when he had his son, when his wife gave birth to his son, his firstborn son. Which, by the way, according to our law, the firstborn son is always dedicated to the Heavenly Father. Okay? So these are facts that you must know to understand these scriptures, especially in the New Testament, who the Gentiles or who salvation is pertaining to. The Israelites that were called Gentiles, that were called foreigners. The greatest example is Moses. Moses called himself uh, or called his son Garashem. Uh, name of a foreigner. Why? Because he was a foreigner in a foreign land. Moses called himself a foreigner in a foreign land. He said that, okay, in the book of Exodus. So you can't get around these facts, man. You cannot get around these facts. So before I go, let me go into what inspired me to do this video. So I'll mention it again. I've done, vi I've done two videos on it that this week speaking will be on this channel here edification exhortation again i'll put the link in the uh, uh description box <clears throat> and uh yeah so this is our speaking video right that we had yesterday and uh let me see if i can get to the comment section Okay, I'm going to have to turn it this way. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see something. Okay. Hmm. All right, so let me turn it this way. Now, there was a comment put on... put on... Uh, on this video here by Paul Kersey. Y'all know who Paul Kersey is. He's the greatest fan that GMS ever had. He's a Stone Cold fanatic. And um, here's the comment right here. Uh, this is Paul Kersey 52 minutes ago. It says, come up with new topics. And if you can't, this is a response to um, Elder Pastor's comment. Because um, he said over here, you want, um, Paul Kersey said over here, uh, 12, 1219. Oh, okay, at 1219, 12 minutes and 19 seconds into the video, I guess he's responding to what was said. You warn him once, you warn him twice. If he doesn't want to listen, then he, <clears throat> then he is out. It's going on 15 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going on 15 years, and you're still talking about the IUIC. Yeah, and we're going to keep talking about them until the Heavenly Father breaks up that group and extracts his elect from that group, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Remember, we're, we're set up to reprove and rebuke, as it is written. So yeah, we're going to keep talking about them, especially when they, when they go off uh, speaking something like, burning in the lake of fire forever. Do you believe that, Paul Kersey? Do you believe that you're going to have Israelites burning in the lake of fire forever? Because that's what Deacon Malachi, I think that's his name, that's what he said of the IUIC, a, a top man in the IUIC, among the IUIC panel. He said that um, you're going to have Israelites burning in the lake of fire forever as their judgment. Now, do you believe that? And he was among a panel. Nobody rebuked him. So evidently all of them believe that nonsense. All right. And that's one of the many 
tenets of their doctrine that they go off on. Another one is the, the, the full moon is the new moon, or the new moon is the full moon. Yeah, the new moon is the full moon. All right. Uh, what else? Oh, the names of the Heavenly Father, they're not that important. You know, the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, I meant to say, is not important. Do you believe that? Well, obviously you do. Uh, there are many things that the IUIC, they go off on. All right. So our job is to is to reprove and rebuke. Also to warn, you know, and that's pursuant to Ezekiel, the third chapter. I think it's around the 19th verse to warn the nation of Israel. Uh, the, when Yahweh Shai was on the planet Earth in, in his three year ministry, right? Was he not constantly speaking about the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, Paul Kersey? Is not the book of Matthew, the 23rd chapter, the, damn near the whole chapter, dedicated to Yahweh Shai, cursing out the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, lawyers? Is, is not that chapter dedicated to that? So what are you talking about? As a man of the Lord, you're supposed to warn those that are unruly. The, the Apostle Paul said to warn them that are unruly. Right? So yeah, we're going to keep talking about that group until... And, and they're not the only group that we talk about. We talk about our own, our own group. El Apostar, you've heard him say it constantly. Members that are in GMS that are not right, that eventually the Holy Spirit is going to kick you out. We constantly say that. So, we, so before we go to somebody else's backyard, we're always checking our backyard first. So you can't say that we're being hypocrites. But you know, you 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 know, you have always been one that that uh, sneak this and lo load this our group, you know, sneak this and load this our group, you know. That's just the reprobate spirit the heavenly Father got on you, all right. And this is just more example. This is just another example. Um, you warned him way over once or twice, and you haven't rejected him. Well. You haven't rejected them. What do you mean? Well, we haven't accepted them. If we accepted them, we wouldn't re rebuke and re uh, reprove them. So our, our, our example of rejection is by constantly warning them and reproving them. The things that they say. And there's a scripture for that too. He, he, he that often reprove. So that cuts you, man. You, you're going to have certain individuals that must be often reproved. Because they're, they're so hard-headed. Hold on, let me get rid of this. I don't know why it does that. Does not the scripture speak about one being often reproved? <laughs> the scripture is just giving us a guideline. If you warn a guy once and then twice and he doesn't listen, then, then th th these were guidelines that the Apostle Paul gave. If you warn a guy once and twice and he doesn't listen, then kick him the hell out. He's a heretic. But you're going to have individuals that, that have to be often reproved. So that's more than one, uh, once or twice. Right? Let's read it. There you go. Proverbs, the 29th chapter, the first verse. He that being often reproved. So you're going to have certain guys that, that are so, that are so uh, stiff-necked. Now remember the Lord said about, what did the Lord say about his people? That they are stiff-necked and stubborn hard-headed people so you're gonna have certain individuals you have to keep you have to constantly warn them and warn them and warn them so what you're trying to say paul kersey is that our warning is ineffective that's what you're trying to say no it's not eventually yahweh is going to bring judgment and you yourself you're going to scream like a bitch when when, when the heavenly father brings that judgment man <laughs> you're going to scream like a little girl Proverbs 29 and 1, it says, He that being often reproved, harden his neck. So you're going to have individuals that are so wicked, that are so uh, reprobate, shall we say, that they have to be often reproved. Not just once or twice or, th or three times, often reproved. So you can, put a, you can put any number on that. So he that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed Ooh, and that without remedy check that out man so i don't i don't know what what you uh hope to achieve by that comment 
you know? <laughs> Let's read it again. This shows you this guy don't know the scripture. You warn him once, you warn him twice. If he doesn't want to listen, then he is out. It's going on 15 years now, and you're still talking about the IUIC. He that often be reproved, right? The Lord set up his, his, his uh, teachers, his apostles, his prophets to, to reprove. Some guys have to be often reproved. Then they hard enough their neck, meaning they're, ne they're damn near never going to listen. Until the Heavenly Father bring that what? That judgment. Suddenly shall they be destroyed without remedy. Suddenly. So we've been warning that group for years, man. All right? So, so what you really should look at, Paul, is the sudden destruction that's coming by way of that group. Because they're not listening to the warnings. Right? You've warned him way over once or twice. Yeah, you're right. And we're continually going to keep warning that group. And you haven't rejected him. Uh, uh, yet yeah, we've rejected him by warning them. If, if they were accepted, Paul... We wouldn't warn them. We wouldn't rebuke them. We wouldn't need to because they would be accepted, right? So our warning and constant reproving is a sign of our rejection. We reject what they're saying, certain things that they say, which is not sound, right? The doctrine is supposed to be sound. Sound, the scriptures speak about sound doctrine, which cannot be, uh, which cannot be spoken against, roughly paraphrasing that scripture, sound doctrine, right? So now, Elder Pastor gave this humorous reply. Uh, it says, well, we don't want to burn in hell forever, <laughs> right? Exactly, because exactly, that's what you guys, you see, he's, he, the Elder Pastor is taking a shot at them because that's what they teach. They teach you burn for, forever in hell. One of their many uh, tenets of their doctrine that goes way off, that is not sound according to scripture, Right? That is not sound according to scripture. You burn in the lake of fire forever. That's not sound. But they continually teach that nonsense. So should we not warn them? Should we not warn uh, uh, potential students that might think, think of joining that group, alert them to, hey, these guys are going off here. They're teaching this garbage. That's not sound according to the scriptures. Watch out for this group. Is that not our office? Are we not supposed to do that? The answer is yes. So we're going to continually warn that group and their wayward doctrine until Yahweh Shemiah Shai bring that judgment. Proverbs 29 and 1 shall suddenly be destroyed. You can't go around the scripture, right? So uh, Paul Kersey came back with a, a, another comment to Elder Pastor's comment. He goes, uh, come, come, up with new, come up with new topics, and if you can't, then you need to study Elder because all of your your videos are literally the same. Well, that's a comment. That, the, that comment. That's a compliment. Let's look at the Gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I was thinking about that as I was reading this comment. I thought about the Gospels. Pretty much they're all the same. Even though M Mark had a way of writing that Matthew didn't write the same way. And Matthew had a way of writing that Luke didn't write the same way. And Luke had a way of writing the Gospel. The event of Yahushua coming on the earth, his birth, what he did, how he gathered the disciples, and then how later he, he suffered, went to the cross, and then he was resurrected. Pretty much it's the same story told by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John with different variations. But it's basically the same message because John didn't write the way uh, Luke wrote, and Luke didn't write the way that Mark wrote. And Mark didn't write the way that Matthew wrote. But they all had the same message. So that's a compliment, Paul. Let's read your comment again. You said, uh, come up with new topics. And if you can't, then you need to study, Elder. And, and is, is that what this knowledge, this truth is about? Coming up with new topics? You know, there's a scripture where it speaks about you had these, uh, I forgot what group they were called. Let me see. Tell a new thing. They met at a place called Mars Hill. Okay, let me see if I can find the scripture. To tell of a new thing. KJV. Okay. 
Yeah, here it is. Acts 17 and 21. That's what I want. Acts 17 and 21. You might you might have been one of those those uh, individuals, man. Since you want to hear a new thing. Basically, Paul, you want to be entertained. You don't want to be enlightened. You want to be entertained. That's why that's why you made that statement. You said because uh, you're getting bored. You know, one of the reasons why guys fall out the truth is because eventually they get bored. How the hell they get bored? I do not know. This this knowledge is always effervescent. Look that word up. This knowledge is always effervescent. It's always bubbly, sparkly, right? Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's 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 always um, exciting. It's never boring. So how the hell can certain guys get bored within this ministry? I don't get it. Come up with come up with new topics. You know why he said that? Because he's getting bored. Oh, you GMS guys, you're putting my feet to sleep. You're, you're boring me. Come up with some new... He wants to be entertained, right? But again, if you go in the book of Acts 17, you, you had groups of Israelites like that. And I'm going to read it to you. Acts 17 and... Uh, let's see if I can find it. Acts 17. Yeah, yeah. This is it right here. Uh, Acts 17. I'll start at the 19th verse. And they took him, the him is the Apostle Paul, right? And brought him unto Ariac. Areopagus, Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. And the new doc the new doctrine that the Apostle Paul was teaching was was of the old doctrine. The word new just means refreshed, right? We know we know our Greek. The, the Greek word there is kainos, which means refreshed. The, the doctrine that the Apostle Paul was teaching was of the old doctrine, all right? But it was new to those Israelites because that was the first time they was hearing that form of doctrine, which the form of doctrine that the Apostle Paul taught was the, was the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, the 100% pure truth which Yahweh Shai, only Yahweh Shai had in those days that he passed on to his disciples, which became um, apostles, all right? The pure doctrine of Yahweh I did a video on that. All right. So reading on it says, For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. Right. This was the first time they were hearing the doctrine, Yahweh doctrine from the Apostle Paul, which the Apostle Paul had Yahweh doctrine. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know, therefore, what these things mean. Now, the 21st verse, here's the point. For all the Athenians, and, and that, that hey, Paul Kersey, you might be one of the Athenians, and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear something or to hear some new thing. Now, wait a minute. You just said to Elder Pastor, I said, come up with, with new topics. And if you can't, then you need to study, Elder. Hey, well, obviously, Paul, you need to study because you don't know the scripture here. You're one of those Ath Athenians. And by the way, the Athenians were known as boy lovers. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there. You said to study, right? You will find, man, of all the Israelite groups out there, and we say this humbly, we're, we're the, probably the most studied ones, all right? Not only do we study the scriptures, man, we study words, we go into etymology, we, man, we, we goes deep. What are you talking about, son? You need to study. You're talking to Elder Pastor, man, that, that, that man's a wealth of knowledge. Did you forget who you're talking to, son? Come on, man. For all the Athenians, the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So that's what you want to hear. You want to hear some new thing. You, you're an Athenian, Paul. I'm going to call this video, Paul Kersey is an Athenian. Because he wants to hear new thing. You tell the elder pastor, you said, come up with new topics. 
And if you can't, then you need to study, Elder. Well, obviously, my, my man, you need to study. All right? Because all of your videos are literally the same. Well, that's a blessing. It's not scripture written speaking that ye all speak the same thing. Like I said, and I use the example of the Gospels. They were all the same thing. Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were all the same thing. The same story told in different variations. Like I said, Luke had a style of writing that John didn't have. John had a style of writing that Luke didn't have. Matthew had a style of writing that Mark didn't have. Mark had a style of writing that Matthew didn't have. Come on, son. Speak the same, speak the same thing. Let's read it. See, you're the kind of guy, you're, in, you're an Athenian. A boy lover. <laughs> no, let me stop. <laughs> you, you want to hear some new thing. And that scripture immediately came to my mind when I read your comments. So that's the spirit, man. Because I don't go around thinking about that scripture. I haven't read that scripture in years. The scripture I just read. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, which, by the way, your group does not teach. They don't teach the name because they went on to a new thing, Paul. You know why they don't teach the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son? Because Bishop Nathaniel, the glorious bishop that he is, he's on to a new thing. He knows something that we don't know. He's on to a new thing. He says that the Heavenly Father is going to give us his new name when Yahweh Shai comes back. Because he don't understand that scripture. He don't understand that the word new in the Greek is kainos, which means refresh. The new thing is really the old thing, Paul. The new thing is really the old thing. All right? The message really has not changed. Paul, the message is simple, okay? <laughs> You're not too bright, man. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai, that ye all speak the same thing. Now, we don't, we don't come up with new. Not, we're not like you guys at IUIC. Nick. What's, your, what's the new thing you guys are coming up now? We're going to burn in, burn in the lake of fire forever. <laughs> you, you with that, Paul Trezzy? Are you with that? You're going to burn in the lake. Is that scriptural? Is that sound? Is that, that's the new thing that you guys have come up with. And now you, you're trying to tell us to come up with a new thing? No, we good. We good, Paul. We good with the old thing. We'll stick with the old thing. Yeah, our video is all the same. Thank you for, for that great compliment. We'll stick with that. We're not, we're not onto a new quest like you guys over there at the IUIC. And if, the trouble is, every time you guys come up with a new thing, it, it, it's, it's, it's a reprobate thing. It's a thing that's not sound according to the Holy Scriptures. The latest new thing you guys have come up with, we're going to burn forever in the lake of fire. Come on, man. Come on, son. Reading on, it says, 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. There be, because when you come up with a new thing, especially a new thing, that's not according to the scriptures. It brings divisions, man. It brings divisions. So speaking the same thing is a good thing. It keeps a unity, man. The unity. Right? You know, we don't have no guy go off half cocked, come up with some new doctrine that's not even sound according to the scriptures. That's the problem. But see, a lot of you Israelites, you, you, you fall out the truth because you get bored. Hey, these guys are always speaking the same thing. Yeah, well, if it's the truth, what's the problem? We're speaking the same thing as long as, as it's the truth. That's what counts. We're supposed to speak the truth. As it is written, speak ye the truth every man to his neighbor. As it is written. So what's the problem? Oh, you guys are always speaking the same thing. You're always going to do the same. Your videos are literally the same. Thank you for the compliment, for the compliment my dude. Okay? Keep it coming. Like uh, Jimmy Conway said to, uh, to Henry Hill. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. That's from the movie uh, Goodfellas. Uh, uh, ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, and that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So that's a blessing, Paul, that we're speaking. Our videos are literally the same. We're speaking the same thing. That's a blessing. All right. And we're all in unity. We're all in unison in one mind. Right. Elder Pastor says something that I would say, 
And I, I say something that Elder Pastor Ramab would say, and Elder Pastor Ramab say something that Bishop, the, Bishop Sakuran would say, the synergy of our camp. Yeah, so thank you, Paul Kersey, for the compliment. Thank you, okay? Thank you for the compliment. Your videos, you're, you're very redundant. You got to do better, Elder. But th th again, that's a blessing. Very redundant. You would say the same thing about, uh, about um, Yahweh Shai. You would say he's very redundant because he pretty much said the same thing. All right? He pretty much said the same thing. You know what proved that? The Gospels. They all say the same thing. You would say that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, they're very redundant because those Gospels are pretty much the same thing, the same message. The resurrection and the death and resurrection of Yahweh Shai, pretty much in a nutshell, right? with different variations, slight variations, because of the style of the writers. Each had their own style, but it was pretty much the same message. So you would say, Paul, that that's redundant. That's what you would say in your limited intelligence. That's what you would say. Your limited understanding. That's what you would say. You know, they're all redundant. The gospel's all redundant because it pretty much says the same thing. Once again, my dude, you lose, man. You lose. And you, and you stay losing. Somebody put a comment here. Sincere question. Isn't new sheep constantly flowing until the work is done? So even if the warning isn't for him, wouldn't it be <clears throat> wouldn't it be showing Yahweh Shai love if you warn the sincere sheep? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you warn the sincere sheep that follows them, that they're heading to the slaughter, it ain't just about one man, it's a body. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the main part of this comment made by Ashba144, the main point of that comment is the warning part. All right? That, like, like I said earlier, the, the Apostle Paul said to warn them that are unruly. And he didn't say to warn them to a period of time and stop. He said to keep constantly warn them. He that's often reproved hardeneth his neck. So, you know, we're going to constantly warn those that are that are unruly until the Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai bring that judgment, man. All right? And, you know, and that's that. All right, so I believe that's all I have to say. And I hope you were edified, you brothers and your sisters out there that watch these videos. So for now, I say Shalom. On to the next one.